time to paint the top sides, so I'm sanding the whole boat with 220 grit sandpaper. So I've sanded the entire uh, top sides, boot stripe, and the area where I had uh, did the deck hole joint. That area has one, one layer of primer on it, but I decided to uh, sand it down smooth again and uh, tucked up a few, few little areas uh, just to get it a little bit, a little better finish. Uh, so I'm gonna do a second layer of primer on the deck hull joint after this, uh, after it dries. And then I'm going to also uh, paint the boot stripe with some white primer and then I'll get ready for some white paint. And then I'll be painting the deck part with the glossy white paint. Now I'm taping off the, uh, the bottom so I can prime this boot stripe. I just finished masking off the, the boot stripe. That's just the stripe that goes in between the uh, bottom paint and the, the top sides. I'm not sure if this is really worth it. It seems like a whole lot of extra effort just to keep the silly little stripe at the waterline, but I don't know, maybe it makes the boat look better. I'm not sure if I'd do it again. First coat of paint on the boot stripe done. Now I'm going to go up and work on the deck. Now the most satisfying part, of course, pulling off that paint, and that tape. I'm very pleased with that stripe. I'm actually not, this is only one coat. I went very thin and uh, uh, having a white primer <laughs> makes a big difference. <clears throat> uh, I don't even know if I need a second coat. I think I should put one on. It's just a bummer to have to remask it off again. Although I could just kind of paint it in the middle and not mask it, but I'm sure I'll, I'll mess up if I do that. Wiping the boat down with some xylene. Before I paint the hulls, I'm mixing the paint for the top sides. I got this, uh, the same type of paint I used on the Dodger, the Total Boat, one part poly, and I wasn't quite happy with this blue. So that, that turns out to be about this, this dark color. It's the same color as like your, your typical canvas. Um, I was going for more of a lighter blue. Like that's kind of what it, the picture looks like, a lighter blue. Um, so I, I'm gonna mix some white and black in there. And I, I'd like to be able to reproduce the color if I, in case I don't have enough, so I'm keeping track of what I started with. So I'll know the, the ratios. And we're just gonna mix in this big bucket. We'll weigh everything before and after. Got that color I want, and I got all the, the ratios. So now just mask off the boat and we'll paint it up. So we're masking off the village pump through holes. I got the boat all masked up. Now I'm gonna set up the camera to do a good time lapse when we paint it. I think it's gonna go pretty quick. Okay, so the first coat came out pretty good. It, it was a little uh, thick at the beginning because I was using the wrong roller. We got some uh, areas where it sagged a little bit. So Christine's just uh, leveling that out um, and keying the surface so we can do the second coat. And I think two coats ought to do it. It covered it pretty well. I wasn't happy where this chain plate ended up on the inside, so I'm gonna redrill the holes this inch over to the right. I've got a bunch of uh, scaffolding set up with all of my ladders, and then these two ladders that are on loan. 
and this <laughs> rickety little step stool because I'm gonna try to do a second coat of paint on the boat all by myself and the sun's getting nice and low so it's not baking on it now. It's a little bit windy, but I don't think it will be a problem. It'll be interesting to see if I can do it all by myself. Today I actually have the real West System 7 inch foam rollers and uh, these are, I think there, there's a mohair, like ultra premium one that also does a pretty good job, um, but these I think are a little cheaper and they do a really good job for this. So you can see how thin they are? They barely put any paint and that's what you want, you want as little paint as possible. My liner clipped in because it's real, the wind is starting to pick up a little more. Yeah, the trees are, you can see they're blowing around out there. Yeah, real nice sunset. So it should be nice and nice temperature for painting today. Man, it's a really pretty day. All right, I got our paint right here. Let's see the hall temperature, 71 on this side, which is perfect. I don't think I'm gonna add any thinner. And yeah, same over here, 72. Okay, I'm gonna grab a headlamp just in case it gets dark, but I think I can do this in like 30 minutes. I like to leave a little mark that tells me where to start and stop. <clears throat> I kind of put the bulk of the paint down in the middle and then I work back into the wet edge. And then I kind of get these uh, top and bottom. Spread that paint around a little bit. Come down here, get the bottom part. And then I come back to where I left off, where my little tick is. Go back a little bit. And I tip it. And it's nice, the sun's set, it's giving me a lot of working time. We'll have to see how this looks in the daylight. It's a little rough at the very beginning, but it's, it's still way better than my result. Yes, the first for the first coat. And this one, give it a little more, because I think I'm just gonna do two. And then I'll save whatever paint I have in a little, maybe a Nalgene bottle or something, for touch-ups when I smash into the dock. I just finished, I poured the exact amount of paint to get this uh, whole boat a second coat, and man, it came out so good. Um, I'm really getting the hang of it now. I had a few little bugs uh, fly into the boat while I was to paint, while I was uh, uh, painting at night because my headlight kind of attracted them. But uh, I was actually able to pull them out and kind of smooth out the paint, surprisingly. Surprisingly well, that line looks super crisp, man. I'm gonna be on the news today. And one man will set sail to cross the Atlantic Ocean and is launching from right here in eastern North Carolina. His vessel, a 28-foot boat he's been repairing to get him to Europe safely on the high seas. This is not his first time navigating the waves alone. Hawaii was 27 days alone at sea. And uh, I kind of like being out there alone and like kind of the challenges and just kind of being with myself. He says not knowing what could happen is part of what makes the journey worthwhile. To see where he ends up from there, you can follow his YouTube channel, which you can find on WCTI.com. I thought they did a pretty good job on my little news segment. Um, I'll put the link in the description. They gave me two whole minutes if you want to watch the rest of it. The paint job, I think it's going to come out really good. We'll have to, we'll have to see in the daylight. I gotta give a lot of the credit to my volunteers that uh, did a great job uh, helping out, getting that paint job to come out good. It's really tedious work and it was really nice to have some people share it with. And uh, I think I'll wrap up the video with some sailboat race I went on uh, a couple days ago with my buddy David. So today we are on my friend Dave's uh, Saber 28, yep. right? Mm -hmm. You need to put a new Windex on top of the mast. And these steps make it super easy. Dave made these himself. You're not falling off of these guys. Dave also recently changed his rigging to this uh, synthetic Dyneema rigging. I think it's pretty neat. I think if when it comes time to change Pickled's rigging, that's what I'll do. So this is my 
first sale of the race, and we're like three minutes out. Pretty exciting. There's the competition. We got twice as many sales as them, though, so. <laughs> with the pole so I can get this big sail out for the downwind leg. Right. We're neck and neck with this boat over here. I had to go across the finish line. They, they did this boat just beat us. I didn't really know what was going on a lot of time during the race, but to be fair, I don't think anyone else did either. Uh, I didn't get the impression we did not win, but it was fun anyway. I'll see you guys in the next video.